Hi boys and girls, welcome to class. Today we're going to do the sneeze lab. The purpose of the sneeze lab is to teach us about social distancing. We keep hearing about being six feet apart, but why? So we have a fake sneeze and we have set up a demonstration for you with a target on the board. We're going to do different distances. We've marked them on the floor. We're gonna do one foot, two foot, four feet, and six feet. This is also one of our first labs this year where we're going to be talking about the scientific method. So, um, we're going to start with the idea of independent variable. Independent variable is the variable that is changed on purpose. It's what you manipulate. So in this experiment, what are we manipulating? What are we changing? One foot, two foot, four foot, six foot. So the independent variable is the distance. The dependent variable is what you observe, what is affected by the change. So we're going to take our sneeze bottle and we're going to sneeze on the target these different distances. What we observe is the sneeze spittle on the target. So how do you think it's going to be different the farther you move away from the target? Think about that for a second. All right, so some words that you might think of are concentration of the sneeze spittle, density of the sneeze spittle, the amount of sneeze spittle. So we're gonna be looking at how much of the target is covered and how um, closely spaced the sneeze spittle particles are. I'm gonna take pictures of the targets afterwards and put them in a folder for you to fill out your lab paper. So you just watch me do the lab and then open up the folder with the pictures in it to fill out your data and the observations. All right, so I think we're ready. Oh, no, we're not ready. I forgot about constants. All right, constants are the things that we keep the same so that our data can be consistent. So we know we've got the marked places on the floor, but we also have to think about height. So I'm going to sneeze from the same height with all of the trials. So. I will put my feet on the first mark. I'm going to put my shoulder the same level. I'm going to keep it parallel with the floor, and then I'm going to sneeze. All right? Okay. Ah, ah, choo! All right, so that's part one. All right, here's part two. We're at two feet. So the independent variable is a distance of two feet. The dependent variable, remember, is the spittle concentration, constants. I've got my arm parallel to the floor. And we're gonna go, ah, uh, ah, uh, choo. Okay. All right, here's four feet, arm parallel, keeping constant. Ready? Ah, uh, ah, uh, choo! All right, boys and girls, here's six foot, and this is supposed to be the safe distance for us for avoiding um, respiratory droplets from our neighbors. All right, ready? One, two, th oh, I'd like to ah, uh, ah, uh, choo. Never mind. Ah, uh, ah, uh, choo! guys we've done our sneezes and remember that I want you to go to the folder so that you can look up at the close-up pictures so you're looking for the blue speckles on the paper and you're looking at how dense how dense they are how concentrated the speckles are the sneeze spittle is what we called it and I also want you to think about how much area of the paper is covered with the blue stuff all right, now after you fill out your data chart, you need to answer, there's a couple questions. One says, how does the one foot picture compare to the six foot picture? And the next one says, how does the density of the ink spots change the farther you move away from the sneeze? All right, then once you've answered the questions, there's a video from WBU called Masks and Spread, and it's linked on the lab paper and it's also in the file. I want you to watch the video, and there's two questions to answer there. 
what are three ways you can protect yourself from contracting a virus, and how does social distancing combined with wearing a mask prevent the spread of viral droplets? So I want you to answer all of those questions. All right, we're gonna stop. Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Gorby with you today. Hi, Mrs. Gorby. We took you on a field trip to the teacher's bathroom. I'm sure you've always wondered what the teacher's bathroom looks like. It looks like a bathroom. All right, so the purpose of this video today is to teach you proper hand washing technique. And we have a special product, and it is called Glow Germ Gel. And you apply the Glow Germ Gel to your hands, like lotion. And the way the Glow Germ Gel works is it responds to a black light. So we're gonna turn that light off there. And we're gonna turn the light on. I'm gonna get it up close of her hands. And you can see the lotion is different than the skin on her arm. You can see it glows in the camera really well there. And she has beautiful fingernails. Okay, so that's how the lotion works. Now, we're not the best at washing our hands, so this is a training aid. So, Mrs. Corby is going to wash her hands like we normally do, quickly. We're trying to get back to class, right? You know, we're in a hurry. All clean. All clean. All right, you can... Or are they? There's still all sorts of that lotion on her hands. So she did not get any viruses or bacteria off. She still has a lot of grime and dirt. So we're going to do it correctly next. Okay, so this is how to correctly wash your hands. Mrs. Gorby is putting the glow germ indicator all over her hands. Make sure you get in between your fingers. So, boys and girls, how long are we supposed to wash our hands? You've heard this too, like we've learned six feet. What is the time? Think in your head. Okay, if you thought 20 seconds, you're right. And we can also sing the happy birthday song or a song of your choice about 20 seconds. And sh shall I show them the uh, black light one more time before I start yes. this time? So we can see her hands are all dirty again. And then see how our regular skin doesn't glow like that. Okay. So, when you wash your hands, you need to use soap and warm running water. And you need to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. You need to do the backs of your hands, the palms of your hands, in between your fingers, your fingernails. Mm. Mr. Johnson, have you been keeping track of time? No, I'm just going to let you wash your hands okay. as long as you think it's appropriate. That's why we need to sing the happy birthday song twice, I think. I know on a day-to-day -day basis, I haven't been the best at, at um, taking enough time washing my hands. So, as I move forward, I'm going to make a conscientious effort to fix that. It's like when we brush our teeth, we have to sing a song to yeah. help us realize how long we should take. Okay. All right, here's the test. Look at that. I feel pretty.
pretty good about that. Do you see any white on your hand at all? I'm gonna try to get close up. The black light makes her hands look purple. Shine it on your fingernail, the one that's got the, look how cool that is. These are, these are my um, calluses. Looky there, I got missed a couple spots. Yes, she did, right there in between her fingers. Let's check the other hand, I'll hold the light. Oh, up the finger up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So. On the palm of her hand. Okay, so she thought she did a good job. Yes, I did. All right, we're going to pause here and then we'll come back. All right, boys and girls, we're back in the science classroom and I want to talk about an extra credit opportunity for you. In your folder in Schoology, I put a hand wash wrap. It's really fun, I want you to listen to it. And then I want you to create your own short, less than 30 second video, because remember we only need to wash our hands for 20 seconds. And you can be as creative as you want to be. You, can, you don't have to sing, you can sing, you can make your own rap, you can just talk us through how to wash your hands. You can um, use props, you can use your friends, you can use your family. Um, the purpose is extra credit for you, and for me it is to learn your names and your faces. All right, have a good time doing it. See you later.